something that I am super excited about. I've been talking about it on and off since I moved here to the Southern Idaho Command. Studio B is now finished. Operational, fini, and ready to go. Just in time for field day 2022. We'll talk about it this time on K6 UDA Radio. Guys, like I said, been a hot minute since you and I have gotten together and talked about ham radio or anything else for that matter. So today, kind of a special, uh, kind of a special thing for me because <laughs> Studio B is done. I'm gonna show it to you. Uh, this is brand new. I've been on the air for a little bit of testing, but I haven't really done much with it yet. We're going to go take a look at it, see what I've done with the room, with the space, and how I put it together and how I'm finishing it up. Before we go out there, I want to uh, want to ask you guys, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button right down below. Uh, also... If you haven't hit the bell notification, do the bell notification. Please share this video wherever you can. And uh, if you care to help out the cause, here's all the ways right here that you could help the cause. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you're a cop or a fireman and you're also a ham radio guy, the address is right down below there. And you, yes, you, could be on my next uh, wall of fame there. I'm looking for patches, challenge coins, all that stuff. I've got to start a whole new one for Studio B. That's enough of me pandering to you. Uh, it is time now to go hit Studio B. Welcome to Studio B at the Southern Idaho Command. This is my actual real ham shack. Uh, Studio A is more the production facility for the K6UDA radio show and a minor ham shack to, uh, you know what, get me up in the morning and I could go work FT8 or go talk to friends. Let's turn everything on and uh, have a look around here. And I will show you guys around uh, Studio B very briefly and we'll talk about some of the things that, uh, that I had to do to make this space inside of a metal building work as a ham radio shack. When you're thinking of where to put your shack, one of the things you've got to consider is the materials that your building is made out of. If you're going to do something uh, made out of a metal building, you got to be aware that you're killing RF inside. These things make a fantastic Faraday cage. All right, that being said, I started this project in the dead of winter because it was an inside project. I knew it was going to take some time. Uh, a lot of expense and, uh, and a lot of work. Now, obviously, when I started this project, I really had no idea how good this was going to look, how homey and how much like a real office this thing was going to take on. Uh, I just originally had a plan to put a couple of built-in desks and the radios. My plan for Studio B is to... Uh, to insert a workbench or a desk over on this wall over here. Now, when I started this project, there was a couple of uh, fluorescent light tubes in this room. And the first thing we did was tear those out, cut some holes in the ceiling and wired in 
some nice new drop-in canless lights. These are the cans that I ended up using, or the can list that I ended up using. Uh, bought them at Home Depot for about 30 bucks a piece. A couple of gallons of uh, this quick cover by Glidden in a flat white. That's all it took, no mixing. After all the basic construction is done, the next big thing you got to do is you got to be able to get the antenna wire from the inside to the outside. Now, I had a couple bulkhead connectors left over from the last project on Studio A, but I needed 10 inch to get through these walls. These were 28 bucks a piece on Amazon. Now, after using the long drill bit to get through that 10 inch wall, uh, there was many trips back and forth to the back of the building to... Uh, get everything fitted and installed. Once all the holes are cut and I can get the bulkhead connector all the way through the wall, now it's time to do the final fitting. I made up some custom wall plates that fit the bulkhead connectors to make a nice clean look on the interior. And it really paid off in the end. Okay, after all the electrical was done, the paint was on the walls. I put some indoor outdoor carpet from Home Depot down on the ground and uh, started putting up a few shelves on the walls. This is where these work tables from Home Depot came in so handy. Uh, after everything is set up, if you need to move them for any reason to get around to do things, you just wheel them out of the way. Fantastic. Again, put up a few shelves, move everything back into place, and uh, put up a few decorations, plaques, and fun things, and this place really starts to look like home. All right, now for the good stuff. Uh, to power everything, I have a little PowerWorks switching uh, power supply. The HF radio itself is the Yellowcraft K-Line that I've had for several years. The radio itself is the Yellowcraft K3S, followed by the P3 and the Yellowcraft speaker. On the other side, I've got my 500 watt Yellowcraft amp and the CAT 500 antenna tuner. I put the K pod there on the table in case I want to use that. Right now, I'm uh, looking at WSJTX and looking at what FT8 is doing on 20 meters. I've got a secondary TV or a, a TV, uh, which is a second monitor on there that I could use for whatever, and a microphone switching pod. Moving over to table number two, I have my uh, System Fusion repeater. This is the DR1X all hooked up. On top of it is a Chinese duplexer, and you do need a set of cans to run a repeater uh, these cost 130 bucks on ebay they program them for you and before you run out and say these are junk they don't work there's a guy in town who actually runs several repeaters here uh, using these very cans on the wall behind the cans is my brand new uh plaqued copy of my uh renewed ham radio license uh, all official here in Twin Falls. I ordered this one from hamcrazy.com. Yeah, and as long as I was on their website, I saw this thing and it was kind of uh, cutesy. I thought, well, eh, what the hell? I ordered it. It's okay. All right, directly below that, I have this Step IR SDA 2000 controller currently not plugged in. Below that is my CDE antenna rotor controller, also not plugged in. Now you're probably asking yourself, or want to ask me, Bob, why the hell aren't your antenna uh, rotors and the controller for that new Step IR hooked up? Well, that's what we're getting to. Uh, we're about a week away from field day, and yesterday, I just poured the foundation for the tower. Now, 
I gotta tell you, having a skid steer and an auger here at the house uh, is a godsend when you're doing stuff like this. I know most of you guys don't have access or don't have equipment like this in your possession. It really helped me, but I'll tell you what, uh, it was, it would have been well worth a rental if I had to do that. Now, uh, we used a sauna tube, 18 inch sauna tube, 18 inch hole, and I made a template with the bolt pattern that I needed and uh, got that all cemented in. Yeah, my trowel's a little bit too big and that cement just ain't cutting it too good. One of the biggest obstacles I think I've dealt with uh, in building Studio B is getting internet into that metal building that is essentially a nice little Faraday cage because I don't want to trench from the other side of the house all the way out to the shop. I chose this Eero mesh network. Now, generally it works pretty good, but when my niece is parked here with her trailer, uh, it has another little RF block between the two buildings and her trailer. Not so good. Now, because I don't have the tower up yet, uh, to do my testing, I use this painter's pole and my 64 to one ballon with a uh, 64 foot piece of wire in a sloper. And it's been working pretty good. I can't wait to get this on top of the tower. All right, like you saw yesterday, we uh, poured everything here. This is the base of the tower, 48 feet or 48 inches deep. Uh, with an extra foot on top and there's my bolt pattern there all ready to bolt that thing in I'm gonna let it set up and uh, cure up for the next uh, four or five days I'll pull all that off stick the base of the tower on and uh, get a couple of buddies to help bolt that tower together and that will be that everything else is just kind of standard you know uh, like everybody else, or most everybody else, I kind of like to hang some of my little memorabilia on the walls. Gives it a nice homey feeling. Also, it does one more thing. These walls, this room is incredibly echoey. And if there's nothing on the walls, everything just echoes. But the more crap I put on the walls, the less I get an echo. So, Expect a few more things to uh, appear. There's nothing else to talk about. So uh, with that, I'm going to say uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. At least do that. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you really like the video or you really didn't like the video or you just want to help me out, leave a comment to this video. And, uh, oh yeah, you know, if you got any great ideas for the shack, radios, anything else uh, around here, leave them in the comments and we'll see what we can do. Maybe I can uh, swing some of these things. Maybe some of you guys, and I know some of you guys, have some insane ideas for a full out contest station. I would love to hear them. Anyway, my friends, uh, that's all I've got. I'm Bob, K6UDA. I'm out of here, 7-3.